Well, about once a year, the Mother City skies are adorned with mythical creatures, birds, and bursts of color. Absolutely. We're talking about the Cape Town International Kite Festival. We had some of the kite makers on the show as well, just before the festival, taking a look at some of their designs. But this festival really harnesses the art of traditional kite making, bringing smiles across the board to all of the festival goers, and it supports a very worthy cause, the Cape Mental Health Organization. Today, local and international kiting enthusiasts will be gathered together to show off their larger-than-life creations. And I will get the chance to join in on all the fun to make and fly my own traditional Swalky kite, deeply rooted in South African kiting heritage. Now in its 23rd year, the Cape Town International Kite Festival is Africa's biggest celebration of kiting, with both modern and traditional kite designs filling the skies. So what are we doing here today? Because I heard that I'm making a kite. Okay, today we are going to be making a Swalky kite. Swalky kite? Why does it have the name Swalky? So we call the Swalky kite because it looks like a swallow, so a swallow kite. Okay, so I've already made the body for you. The first time I bought a kite, it was one of those kites that you buy at like a 10 rand store, right? So you buy it, it's plastic, it's got its own little parts for assembly and it was a mess. It never flew, it didn't even lift off the ground. I was so heartbroken and I decided I'd never attempt it again until I got a professional to show me how to do it. The teacher that I met today was amazing. Her name is Bilkies. She's so cute. She's only 19 years old, but she is a beast when it comes to making kites. We will put glue on this piece. On this frame over here? How long have you been doing this now? So I didn't make kites when I was in grade four, so probably when I was nine. Wow. And it really started with a school project, and then my dad was like, he's been making kites for as long as he's been alive, because my oh. grandfather was used to make kites, and oh. his great-grandfather used to make kites. So I think it's something I just get to carry um, to our family. So some of the challenges that I faced today was making the actual kite. The glue is a problem. You've got to make sure that you really cut the paper well and then stick it in a way that it's not going to leave any air bubbles because you don't want your paper to tear. Fortunately, I did not make that mistake. If you find yourself getting an opportunity to make a swalky kite, my top tip would be just have fun with the moment. It's so much fun. And we are done. Woo! Now we've finished the outer wings of the kite. And I think it looks pretty good. I think this looks absolutely amazing. And then all we do is we'll repeat the process again so. in all of the different panels of the wings. And it might take a while, so we have finished the kite for you because I can see you're very excited. I'm so excited. So we have one for you over there. Awesome. So. Do we get to take that one out and fly it? You ready to go fly this kite? I'm ready to go and fly the kite. Okay. Let's go. Good teamwork. <laughs> The festival is also the biggest mental health awareness event in the country and this year's theme, hashtag right to fly, celebrates every person's right to realise their true potential. Ingrid, what is the importance of this festival? For us, it raises much awareness about mental health, mental well-being, that impacts on all of us, as well as raising awareness about mental disability, specifically children and adults living with intellectual disability and those living with psychiatric disabilities. Also to raise much needed funds for us as an organization to provide services in dire communities who can't afford mental health care. And we believe that every citizen in our beautiful country deserves to have access to free mental health care. Kite experts and enthusiasts from China, England, Germany, the Netherlands and even Poland flock to this event to demonstrate that almost any design can fly. Cutting is such a great sport because it involves all the family and it takes us all over the world. It's a really nice, it's fresh air and it's all the sort of things that you want to do. You want to incorporate the children, you want to incorporate grandchildren, you just want to spend time with people. My experience of the Cape Town International Kite Festival this year, it's been fantastic. This is our fifth time and we always, always enjoy it. For Leanne, her dream of flying a kite finally came true. So like ensure that it doesn't fly always, you can pull it back and then like let go. There she goes! I can't believe I'm flying a kite again. Okay, come back, come back. Oh, you want to pull it this way and then... Oh, you can pull it that way? Okay, all right. Wow. Oh, she just wants to go the other way. <laughs> she's, she, <laughs> she's all over the place. My highlight of the day was just seeing Cape Townians coming out to support an incredible cause. They brought their families, they had fun with their children, great music, great food, really a wonderful atmosphere today.
It was such a wonderful experience and I can see why people spend their whole lives doing this and why they fall in love with the process. These colourful kites are a reminder that although we are all different, we all deserve the care and support to fly.